Hi, this is Tommy Pope. It's actually Friday, and I'm back at my office in uh, here in York County. Uh, we were in Columbia at the beginning of the week. The House was to deal with the governor's budget vetoes, and then the Senate has taken them up in the last couple of days. And uh, the reason I wanted to wait till today is to see what the Senate had done so we could discuss it a little more fully. Uh, one thing I'll tell you on the budget vetoes that's of interest and, and probably more in depth than we have time for this video right now, is a lot of times the items you'll see will be small, seemingly insignificant items, but uh, unique to one area, like uh, the fire department up in an upper uh, corner of the state or, or a swimming pool in a certain area. There were other different kind of earmarks, for lack of a better term. The, the problem with those is that that may be the only thing that that area is actually getting in the budget. And so when representative so-and-so comes and says this, you know, is the issue and he explains it to you or the, uh, the Future Farmers of America beach uh, place when the roof's caving in and this is the only way to fix it. What you don't see is a lot of other parts of the state are getting a lot of other money that you never see on these vetoes and sometimes these small things are the only thing that that area gets and so sometimes I think it is important both for our community if we ever had uh, such an item and for the state that these small areas are getting some assistance in that regard too so oftentimes not always but oftentimes I would support those in the in trying to override the veto I'll tell you going forward we've got to come up with a way that fairly gives some money around the state. Quite candidly, what happens is the haves keep getting more, and you may not see that in the top part of the budget. Uh, the smaller areas don't get uh, a, a, a equitable or a fair share, and so I think that's something I've been kind of brainstorming on some ways to, to maybe propose to address that going forward, even if, if it was that each area, each House of Representatives area or each Senate area had X amount of dollars each one did that you could pool together to help perhaps on an infrastructure issue or a water line issue or something unique to our community so that it's not there yet I'm certainly not on ways and means but it, it's something that I think going forward we need to look at another issue that came up this week is uh, in the budget was the uh, the House and Senate members getting a, a cost of living raise or actually it was an in-district expense raise I, I voted against that it passed the house it ultimately did not pass in the senate but here's what i want to tell you and again several things that may uh, lead us to another talk for another day but um, it was put in the budget by the senate it comes to the house in the budget and we defeat it the first time, it's brought back up, it ends up passing, it goes to the Senate where they put it in and they vote to not include it. So it, it was, it's very strange. My concern in general and the reason I voted against it, I don't like the way it came through. I'm not necessarily saying that it didn't justify that the cost involved and in being, I can tell you, here it is after session, and as you know, I'll be working for you all during the fall. I'm not saying it is or isn't justified, but we need to do it straight up in front of the voters, and we, we need to not slide it in at the tail end of a, 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 a bill or a budget session. So, again, I don't know that we'll necessarily hear any more about that going forward, but I mean, it, it is an issue because I don't want just the independently wealthy people or the folks that have uh, that are blessed with the circumstances like me with a small business that will support me going to Columbia being the only folks that could serve. So there's some issues to be dealt with that I think the voters could be involved with uh, going forward. I'll also tell you, I've talked about this all year, uh, the ethics bill died in the Senate. It did not get passed yesterday. As you know, it's been about two years of work, two and a half years of work from a lot of people. It, it wasn't perfect. You know, I've told you from the beginning, I believe in independent investigation. I'm on the ethics committee. I think we should have an independent investigation. Heck, I'm for independent everything. But what concerns me a little bit is folks that I'm not sure really want the bill to pass at all, that really don't want ethics reform, but then when it doesn't have independent investigation in it, then suddenly they go, well, we don't want the bill at all. I think it's, it's kind of a little bit of a trick or a little bit of a double standard. We got word from the conference committee that the Senate would not consider an ethics bill that had 
uh, independent investigation in it. So ultimately that got taken out, but some of the other disclosure items got left in. Ultimately that ended up uh, being one of the reasons the Senate didn't pass it is because they said it didn't have independent investigations. So as you can see, I, I think we may uh, have some folks that, that claim to be standing for one thing, but, but in the back room are satisfied that we're not moving forward on ethics. Which leads me to my final thing. I know this has been long and drawn out. Um, this fall, uh, as we go into the next session, all the bills that were on the table are now dead. So this fall going into the next session, I'm gonna pre-file a number of bills. Uh, the ones that come directly to mind are, I'm gonna pre-file a bill again to have independent investigation for ethics. I think that's important. Uh, there's a number of other bills. I want to try to pre-file something to help us here in York County that would allow our pennies for progress to be used uh, to, for repairs, whether you want to call it pennies for potholes, but I want to do whatever needs to be changed on the state level that would allow us to vote on that next time when it comes around. There's a number of other issues with infrastructure. There's a number of uh, uh, criminal matters that uh, did not get passed again that, uh, that I hope to pre-file, but my point being with this, as we go into the fall, and you can always get me at Tommy at TommyPoke.com, as we go into the fall, if you have ideas, and many of you have already sent me some stuff, if you have ideas on bills you would like me to propose going into next session, then please send them to me. Uh, reach out to me, let me know um, if I can get it done. Uh, just because I propose it doesn't mean it happens, but it cannot happen if we don't put it in and try to get it done. So. I'm back in uh, the area. I'm gonna take a couple of weeks with my family, and uh, and then I'm I'm back home, back working here at Elrod Pope, and uh, back in the district working for you. Uh, if you need me, Tommy at TommyPope.com. It's been a long, strange two years. This last two years with the ethics and all the things going on, um, it's an honor for me to serve you, and I'm gonna keep working hard for you. Thanks a lot.